Good morning, folks. We begin with coronagraph updates. Soho shows a sun diving comet coming in from the south with fairly good size, but average or even below average speed for what we've come to expect. It managed to survive almost to the corona, and it came in just as a filament was destabilizing. We saw the filament eruption yesterday, but without Soho updates, we couldn't know this comet was on track and on time for the eruption. Solar flaring is still low. Just in C range. It flies in the face of the current sunspot number, especially since we have major growth and complexity building in those same two southern incoming groups we've now eyed for two days in a row. Those sunspots are not only the largest groups on the disk, but they've got some magnetic mixing as the positive umbras intrude back through the negative here. Strong delta potential. Meanwhile, one could argue for calling the trailing group delta already for that positive and negative interaction. Solar wind showing a steady stream only slightly above average intensity. Our shield is doing just fine at the moment. Of course, we're looking towards our next coronal hole coming in down south, red negative. That dark patch incoming here is that opening, and it appears to have some moderate force only to that leading component with power coming in behind it. It will nevertheless change near Earth's space from a positive to a negative influence tomorrow. Today's links are can't miss. We start with a NASA piece about the plasma tsunamis from our star detected by Voyager as it leaves the solar system. Clearly, it's not quite out of our neighborhood just yet. We've also got an article on salt spraying to brighten marine clouds and cool the planet. If I may offer an opinion, geoengineering is unnecessary and dangerous but I'll leave it up to you. The link is posted below. We're also seeing that the lava flows in Hawaii are further encroaching civilization. Details and timelines in that link. And our top story, the magnetic field update. We've waited five years for the official word, and it's here. A full report on declination, intensity, positions, and our shifting magnetic poles. The new position of the North Magnetic Dipole is here right around 159 west, 86 north. This is slightly further out than the predictions of the previous report. We've actually moved almost across to the next longitude line or just to that edge of the triangular cutout there. Our shield is still fading. Our poles are still shifting quickly. Also, don't forget that website upgrades to suspiciousobservers.org begin later today. Please excuse any site difficulties over the next few days as we implement our changes and improvements. We're rolling with the temperature overlay today to show the effect of the lows. Look at how the wind drive around this low affects temperatures. That's why it warms up followed by a cold snap and snowstorm. The west isn't out of the woods either as the next system continues to crest. We've got watches east and west with a calmer day in central areas. In Europe, you can once again see how the low pressure systems pull heat and moisture up their leading convergence lines, making it much warmer than it otherwise would be, as you can see to the east. Those systems and remaining flows off the Atlantic bring tonight's watch areas, and not just for rain, but for high wind gusts as well. Keep an eye on your forecast. We've kept the temperature on to show summer coming early down under. More importantly, we've got a convergence cresting southeast Australia, another one dipping down to New Zealand, and the convergence remaining through the central portions of the larger island. Those are our watches overnight, with Melbourne and Auckland taking top alerts. We've got shots of our star to close at 6.10 a.m. Eastern Time, 5.10 a.m. Central. That's the news. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.